Well, hey, Switch, I am so thankful to get to be speaking to you through this video. It has been far too long because at this point, gosh, it's been like a month since schools were closed, since we started self-isolating, social distancing. And if you are anything like me, then you are eagerly anticipating when the season of waiting is over and things finally go back to some type of normal. And I'm excited for today's message as we are wrapping up the three-part message series, The Greatest Story Ever Told, because I think it's gonna be a really powerful reminder that even in the middle of a season of waiting, like we're in right now, that God is always moving, right? In the Old Testament, we saw all of the different ways that God was moving in between when humanity rebelled against God and then when Jesus redeemed us on the cross. Or in the actual Easter story itself, we saw God moving in the waiting that was between Jesus' crucifixion and then his resurrection. And today we're gonna explore all of the ways that God is moving in the waiting that we find ourselves in today in between when Jesus came back from the dead and then when Jesus comes back to earth, when Jesus comes to fully bring heaven to earth and when God is going to make all things new. Remember this, that even in the waiting, God is always moving. God is moving in you and he wants to move through you. Today's message is from one of our favorite youth pastors, Allison McCraw, out at Life Church Rogers, where she's going to conclude this series by helping us remember that the end of our story is God making all things new. We call it restoration. Check it out. That's good because I came ready to preach today. Hey, come on. So we're gonna start in Acts chapter three, verse 21. It says this, it says, heaven must receive him, talking about Jesus, until the time comes for God to restore everything as he has promised long ago through his holy prophets. What does that mean? God is restoring all things, and that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. But before we jump in, if it's cool with you, I would just love to pray. I feel the weight of this message today, so I just wanna pray and we'll get started. So Jesus, I thank you that this is your message. God, this is your story. You've been writing it from the beginning, God. I pray that you would speak through it. God, you would use me as your vessel and you would move in hearts here today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we've been on a journey all month long, right? And we've been looking at Easter. And we've been answering this question, why does it matter? In week one, we took it all the way back to the beginning of creation and we actually found out that we rebelled against God. And then week two, we found out the good news, right? Is that God sent his son Jesus to lay down his life for you and for me. And three days later, he rose from the grave and through him, he has redeemed us back to God. It is, it is incredible what God has done, but it also uh, leads us to beg the question is like, but now what? <laughs> Jesus, you died on a cross 2,000 years ago. Now what? Jesus, I gave my life to Christ. Now what? Jesus, you, um, you actually went back to heaven and we're all still here. <laughs> Now, what? We are talking about the greatest story ever told, and it's this, is that we rebelled against God. Jesus redeemed us on the cross, and now, now God is restoring all things. Uh, So I I bought a car uh, a couple years ago. Car's name is Beulah. I was gonna give her like a cute zippy name, and then she showed her true colors. Uh, Here's all you need to know, I've fixed a lot of things on Beulah. I mean, I paid a lot of people to fix a lot of things on on Beulah, and we've been through it, but I ain't no quitter and we're sticking together. And uh, uh, the other day, I I took Beulah in to get her oil changed because that's what you do when you're an adult. And uh, while I was there, and they're like, oh, Miss McCraw, yeah, you have a nail in your tire. Not shocked. Um, They're like, we can fix that for you. I was like, okay. Fix it. Hour and a half later, I'm late. They fixed my car. They're like, Miss McCraw, your car is fixed. Great. Hop in it, get down the road. Beulah's not fixed. 
she do not feel right. It is not, it's not good. Call the place, they're closed, but I gotta get somewhere. So I pull onto the interstate, and Beulah is shaking at this point. Like, back tire is shaking, I pull off. I was like, I got a flat something, check my tires. It's night, I'm alone on the interstate. Nothing's wrong, can't find it. Get to my friends, baby her there, they can't find anything wrong. I'm trying to make it home, like, still shaking car, and I'm like, Honestly, I'm not thinking good things about this place that I took. Like, you said you fixed my car, all this is wrong. You will be seeing me in the morning if we can make it there. And about, about that time, I looked down and I realized they had put the parking brake on. I didn't even know where the parking brake was. <laughs> Take it off, Beulah runs just fine. <laughs> Here's the thing, we know when things aren't right. We know when things aren't fixed when they say they're being fixed. And we could talk about this great thing like, God is restoring all things, yeah! But in the back of our minds, we're kind of like, is he really though? Like, God, you say you're fixing this earth, but it's kind of jacked up, and what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is not matching up to what you're saying. I can turn on the news and there's another shooting, more corruption, so much hate. It's like, God, if you came to save this world, why is it still broken? And then it's the stuff that's going on in our own lives, right? Like, okay, God, I gave my life to you, but sometimes when I wake up, I don't feel any different than I did before. I'm still struggling with this sin. My family's going through a hard time. My friend is battling this anxiety and I don't know how to help them. Like God, if you're restoring things, like are you even doing anything? Is there a plan here, God? Because I don't see you moving. And it can become frustrating and disappointing. And sometimes we're just mad at God. And here's the thing, is that when sin entered the world, we know that pain entered the world. Brokenness entered the world. We see it, we feel it. But what I came here to tell you today, and what I hope you leave knowing by the end of our time, is that our God is restoring all things. All things. He's not checked out just letting us duke it out amongst ourselves. He's not vacationing in heaven. No, he is actively and intentionally working and restoring all things back to their proper design, what he meant from the beginning. I came here to tell you today that there is a plan, and it is a good plan. But here's what you need to know about this plan. This plan is like a multiverse in game times a billion level plan. Like, I can't even fathom all that God has done, is doing, and will do. Like, we could talk about it for a lifetime, and barely scratch the surface. So for the t sake of today, I'm gonna boil all that down into a three-step plan of restoration, what God's doing to creation. Step one, good news, it's already been done. Jesus did it on the cross, rose from the grave. Through him, we are now redeemed back to God. That's done. For the rest of our time today, I wanna talk about step two, and step three, and know that they both involve you and me. So, in God's plan for restoration for all creation, step one is done. Step two, and God is restoring you personally. He's restoring you personally. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says this. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Has anyone, oh yeah, that's good. Uh, I gotta know, I gotta know. Anyone here, their parents ever uh, remodel part of their house or maybe they've seen a house being remodeled or you watch like Fixer Upper with your grandma, anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like what happens? There's this house, it's kind of sketchy, but it's got great potential. And what do they do? They create this incredible vision of all that this house can be. And then they rip everything out that's broken, old, or gross. If it doesn't belong, it's gotta go. And this house goes from like ugly to like really ugly. <laughs> but it doesn't stay that way. Over time, 
they build it back up, and it becomes more beautiful than they ever thought that it could be. And in the same way, Jesus is restoring you from the inside out. It, uh, it kind of makes sense um, why Jesus was a carpenter, you know? And this carpenter, he has an incredible plan for your life. He loves you so much. His plan is for you to be everything he has created you to be. For you to live life to its fullest, where you are a part of something so much greater than yourself, using what he's given you to restore other people. There's a plan, because here's the thing, giving our lives to Christ, man, that's not the destination. That is just the beginning of all that God wants to do in and through you. But for that restoration to happen, sometimes we don't always realize is that restoration is a process, and processes are messy, and processes take time. And when we give ownership of our lives over to God, if we don't fully realize that, we can get in the way of that. Because either we get discouraged in the middle of it, or we resist it. For the new to come, the old has to go. And you think about it, you know, we give our life to Christ and we say, Jesus, come into my life. Make me new. I want your healing. I want your love. Make me different. And as soon as God starts to take old stuff out of your life, you're like, hold on. What about that? Well, I don't know about this, Jesus. I'm not sure about this. Like, that's not what I signed up for. You know, like, God, I give my life to Christ now, but like, all my friends are leaving me. Or God, I know you're telling me to break up with this boyfriend because he doesn't follow you and we're doing things we shouldn't, but he's really cute and I don't wanna be alone. Or God, I know you want me to forgive my dad, but I'm, I'm still mad at him and I'm not ready to let that go. Or God, how could you let me get hurt and take away my scholarship? Like I had a plan, God, what am I supposed to do now? Because here's the thing, sometimes we are like me and Beulah, where we're trying to go somewhere in life and we're wondering why God is holding us back when we're the ones with the e-brake on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. And we all do it. Yeah. I felt this so many times in my life because for the new to come, the old has to go. And the biggest time in my life was uh, 2018. Uh, I was a youth pastor in a switch in Texas. And I hit a season where I, man, I was not doing too hot. I was discouraged. I wasn't winning. I didn't like myself very much. And it just feels like I just could not get any traction. And I prayed so hard to God, asking him, God, heal me. Make me better, make me a better leader. Like I know I'm not there yet move in my life. And God answered that prayer, but it came in the form, form of being asked back to step, to being asked to step back from a lead youth pastor role. And here's what you need to know is that that had been my dream since I was a student sitting in your seat. And God, he laid me low. I never cried more than I ever had in my life. And I'd never felt like such a failure. But do you know who was there when that was gone? God. Do you know whose grace and love I experienced more than I ever had in my life? God's. Do you know who sent incredible people into my life who encouraged me and built me back up? God. Yes. And after a year and a half, of him restoring my confidence, my health, and my faith. Now, today, I get to be the youth pastor in Rogers, Arkansas, leading students to become fully devoted followers of Christ in a brand new place, full of peace, and humbled by all that God has done in my life. God is restoring all things. What about you? Are you in the process? Because restoration is a process, and processes are messy, and processes take time. Don't lose heart, because you are not a shack that God is trying to throw up in the backyard in a day. No, you are 
his masterpiece, created anew in Christ Jesus to do the good works which he planned for you long ago. Because when you've experienced that restoration, when you've experienced that freedom, that love, that hope, you can't keep it to yourself. You've gotta share it with everyone else because step one on this restoration, Jesus did it. Step two, he's doing it in and through you. And step three, he's empowered you to restore this world. This is what Jesus said to his followers right before he went to heaven. You think that's pretty important. It's the last words you ever say, right? In Acts 1, starting verse 8, this is what he said. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of all the earth. And after this, he was taken up to heaven and while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. Why would Jesus leave? (laughs) It's like, God, we've got more work to do. Why Why would you go back to heaven? Here's the thing, one Jesus on this earth was not the plan. The church, his restored people, empowered by his Holy Spirit, going out into this world. That has been the plan from the beginning. You are the plan. You are the plan. Do you think it's an accident that your generation is one of the most caused generations that we have ever experienced? Do you think you put that desire in yourself to see what's wrong in this world and go fix it? No, you have been created created with that desire to heal this world, to help the lost, not by yourself, but empowered by God's spirit, with his power, with his love, with his freedom, and bringing that to a lost and a hurting world, being his hands and his feet. And you might be sitting here like, that's awesome. That is exactly what I wanna do. But I'm also trying to hold down my B in math. I don't even know where to begin with that. I would say just start where you are. Ask yourself these questions. Where has God put you? Who has God put, you, put around you in your life? Do you think that's an accident? What passions has he given you? What do you care about that other people don't care about? What do you see that makes you angry in a good way? Do you think that's an accident? And then what's one step you can do? Just one. Because if the whole church took one step, guess what? We're one step closer to restoration. Because God, God is restoring all things. Um, I have a student. Um, she used to be in Switch. Uh, she's graduated now. Her name's Otez. I love her with all my heart. I call my sweet baby Otez. And here's what you need to know about Otez. Otez is the light of any room she walks into. She's so funny. She's beautiful. So talented. What you may not have known about Otez when she was in Switch is um, because of the things that had happened to her in her life, um, she struggled with depression. She struggled with self-harm. And she hated herself to the point where she attempted to take her life. And this is what Otez said about what God did in that time of her life. She said, I believe that no one cared about me enough to stay alive. And in those feelings, God met me where I was. And it was that night that I decided that I couldn't live how I was living anymore. I wanted God to be Lord over my life. I began to know that God was with me in all of my pain and hurt. He was the only one who could heal my brokenness. I wanted a reason to stay alive and Jesus was my reason. Jesus was my only hope to live a life worth living. A life without Jesus was painful and empty. She goes on to say that the church, her community, was a huge reason why she decided to follow Jesus. Because I saw that Jesus and the people around me, they loved me in my brokenness, encouraged me to keep pursuing Jesus when I wanted to give up. She says, "Now, now I treat people so differently I see the value in people's lives and how important they are and I see how beautiful they are. 
Doesn't mean it's easy though. She says, I still struggle with my identity and loving myself, but at the end of the day, I know whose I am and God continues to reveal himself to me. And here's the thing about Otez is that now Otez, man, after graduation, she's in ministry school and she's sharing Christ with everyone around her. She's going to overseas missions to share the gospel all over the world. And what God has done in Otez's life and through Otez's life is what God wants to do in your life and through your life. Because God is restoring all things. Yeah, we rebelled against God. Jesus redeemed us on the cross and now God is restoring all things. The question is, are you gonna resist it? Or are you gonna step into it? Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you that you are moving. You are moving, Jesus. Even when sometimes we can't see it or feel it, God, you are restoring families. God, you are restoring our lives. God, you are bringing hope and peace and healing. You are moving. I thank you that you invite us to be a part of it. You empower us to be a part of it, Lord. With heads still bowed and eyes still closed, maybe you're here today and you recognize that you, you know God, you follow him but you've been resisting, resisting what he's been calling you to do in your life, resisting stepping into what he's called you to do. But tonight, you don't wanna do that anymore. You wanna step into what he's called to do and the restoration he wants to bring through your life. If that's you, would you raise your hand so I can pray for you? God, I thank you for every hand in this room that's raised, God. God, you know their pain. You know the brokenness that they feel. You know the desires you've placed in their heart to heal what's broken around them, God. And I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to them, that they would feel your presence, God, and you give them the strength and power they need to step into it, God. We open our hands and our hearts to you. As we continue praying again, head still bowed, eyes still closed. Maybe you're here today and you recognize that maybe you're not on step two and you're not on step three because you haven't taken step one yet. You know, if I asked you, if we were sitting down and, and I asked you, tell me about your relationship with God. Tell me what you think about him. Maybe for you, you don't know him. He's never been a part of your life. Or maybe, maybe you tell me about church, your parents' relationship, but you, you have never given of over ownership of your life to Jesus. You have never made that personal decision. And here's, here's what I know is that there's no better time than now. Because no matter how far you feel from God, he stepped in the gap so that he could have a relationship with you. While we were sinners, while we were broken, while we were full of pain, he came and he died on a cross for you and for me, rose from the grave, defeating sin and death and hell so that you can have a relationship with God, so that you can be restored, so that you can walk in your purpose. And you're here tonight and you recognize that is what I'm missing. That is what I want. I am not gonna resist you, God, anymore. I'm ready to give my life to you. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now.